What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video is gonna be a great beginner project. I'm gonna show you how to build a choose your own adventure text adventure game in Python. Okay, so a choose your own adventure game is basically a classic style of video game as one of the very early computer program games because it was so simple to create and therefore it's a really good beginner project, but there's still a lot of Python and object oriented programming concepts in it that are going to be pretty useful, like understanding how to get inputs and display outputs into the console window as well as what to do with that data how to compare different answers and choose different paths and make decisions based on input basically all advanced programming is is taking different more and more complex data and determining what to do with that data so understanding the fundamentals of how to take in data and process it and make decisions based off of that is actually a really good fundamental lesson to learn and then in a text adventure, it's just fun because you get to be kind of creative and you get to kind of do some different things based on your own creativity. So let's uh, let's just boot this one up as a little example of what we're going to play. Um, and let's say we want to play and let's say we want to go to the jungle. OK, and we're in the rainforest and they ask us if our tour guide has been gone a while and if we want to follow him or wait here. Let's say we want to follow. So we head off after the guide and then we there's a river, there's a canoe nearby. Should we follow by walking or canoe? Let's say we're going to walk. As soon as you walk into the woods, a huge snake crushes you to death. Ending two out of six found. So it may seem like a, just a simple, stupid little story. Obviously, I kind of steered us directly into a quick death just to show you kind of the goal of this game. Um, and I want to say up front, a lot of what you're going to get out of this project is going to actually be based on your own creativity and where you take it. Because ultimately, if you're just copying my adventure one for one, um, it's set up to be a tutorial. It's not necessarily as in-depth as a full program or a full project would get you. So follow along. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions uh, at any point. And please be sure to leave a like on the video if you found it useful. Check out the channel for a ton of other great content and subscribe if you're enjoying what you're seeing. All right, so let's get into the tutorial and uh, let's just start by asking the user for their name. So to do that, we'll make a variable called name and we'll just call this input um, and we'll say enter your name and then we'll put it so something I like to do whenever I do inputs I end it with a space before closing out the quotation marks and you'll see now if I run this um, it's gonna say enter your name and it gives us one space whereas if I didn't have that space you can test it in your program if you want the name is gonna be smushed right up against the exclamation mark it's not gonna look quite right so um, that's why I do that but then let's make the first line after that just uh, print and we'll, I'm actually going to do F. So in F string, if you're not familiar with it, if this is a really beginner project for you, it's one of the um, best tools to include variables with strings. So uh, we have that name variable. And now we can just put it in these curly brackets and say greetings name. And if we want this to be grammatically correct, then we'll do it this way. And just so you can see why I like the F string, if we were going to do it without that F before the string, we'd have to do greetings and then a space. And then outside of the quotation marks, we'd have to do plus and then name. And then if we were ever worried that this variable could be something other than um, other than a string, we'd also have to include this str. So say that was age and not name and it was an integer this formatted string, those curly brackets are going to turn into a string anyways, whereas you would need this str. So obviously, especially by the point you get to like numerous variables in a statement, um, you're going to really want the formatted string. So greetings name. Welcome to your adventure. There we go. Create a good little atmosphere here. And then let's go ahead and get an input. So this is going to be just like name, but we'll call this variable start. And uh, this is going to be just the first one I use to give you an example of like choosing. Um, so we'll say, would you rather rather play the game or die? And we'll use this one as an, um, we'll say or 
perish just because it's a little less graphic maybe i don't know maybe it's more graphic <laughs> um but so we'll just say if start equals play then what we're gonna do is print great let's play the game and if you want to use uh, qu quotations inside of your inside of your um, individual lines of text and you use these single quotes you have two options one you could either swap these single quotes out for double quotes um, or if you are just way more familiar with doing it this way and you want your strings in single quotes you can do a backslash um, single quotation and then that'll define it as a literal um, okay so we'll say let's play the game but then let's do an else which is gonna be else and then we will just print lame okay your and I'll show that now you're dead now so uh, this is just an example this is the very first example of how to make a decision so what I'll show you here is we'll enter our name we'll say Pete Greetings, Pete. Welcome to your adventure. Would you rather play the game or perish? And actually, you can see I didn't put a space after uh, the question there. So I'll say perish. Lame. Okay, now you're dead. So I am going to add a space there. Um, but what's cool is the way we wrote this is uh, anything other than play is just going to kill the person right off the bat because it's like they fundamentally aren't understanding how the text game is going to work. So uh, this is kind of a good like vetting question to make sure the person knows how to play, wants to play, uh, etc. So uh, we'll just use that as an example to get into the game. And this, these are kind of the fundamentals right here of how we're going to do this. So if you want to take a quick pause and try to add some um, more lines before going on, then this might be a good place to break. But if not, let's just soldier on. Okay, so then let's ask this second question. Setting equals input. And we'll say want to go to the jungle or the desert. And this is kind of a common theme in text games is uh, they kind of steer you in the direction of the responses they're expecting to get because they're limited by how many responses the programmer plans for. So if this just said, where do you want to go? And we had, you know, jungle, desert, space, uh, middle of the earth. Like if we had all these different things programmed in, it's still limited by the programmer and how many options they want to give the player. So sometimes if you're trying to limit it, but you also want it to be fun to play, you kind of steer the player in what their options are. So what we can do from there is after our if else, we can come down here and now we've got the, the only way we're going to get to this rung of code um, is if we do setting because what you can do anytime the code is like over. So lame. Okay, you're dead now. Add this quit statement and that'll finish your program so it won't go on because if you don't add the quit, it's going to go and look for setting even if they died. Um, so that little quit statement is useful when you're completely done with your program. All right, so we'll say if setting equals, and we'll do the jungle first. And we will say print. Welcome to the mighty Amazon jungle. No, wait, we'll say rainforest. But I guess it's a jungle still, I think. Your tour guide told you to wait here dot 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 all right we'll create a little foreboding and now in this second line we're going to get a response so we'll say response and it's still going to be text it's going to print out um, just like that first line that was just a print statement but now we've created a second uh, a second line which is going to look better in the in the text game and we'll just say the response is an input that we'll say but he has been gone a long time. Follow him or wait here. Okay, and now what we'll do is inside of this if statement, we'll create an additional branch. So we'll say <clears throat> if response equals follow, 
then we'll print oh we'll print you follow him into the trees and we'll just do that for now we'll add another layer of it later but then we'll do l if response equals wait um, and then we'll print we'll print you wait another 10 minutes and he still isn't here uh, and I need that I gotta take my own advice and he still isn't here there we go um, okay so one more thing we want to do is else and we just want to print so this means they didn't say wait or follow we just want to print invalid response you lose and then we'll um, add a quit here as well so that was kind of a lot of typing because these text adventures are kind of monotonous in terms of like putting the typing in um, but now I'm just gonna run it and show you what we did so we did I'm gonna make that a little bigger that's better enter your name and let's say we are Indiana Jones greetings Indiana Jones welcome to your adventure would you rather play the game or perish let's play Great, let's play the game. We're gonna go to the jungle because we haven't had anything for the desert yet, so we go to the jungle. All right, we're in the mighty Amazon rainforest. Your tour guide told you to wait here, but he's been gone a long time. Follow him or wait here. So we will follow. And we follow him into the trees, and that's all we get for now, but hopefully you're understanding the methods with which we built this game. Um, so basically, we could take this if setting for the jungle, and we could make in take the entire thing make an l if and now we'll do it for the desert and instead of being in the mighty amazon rainforest we could be in the mighty sahara desert we could put the exact same sentence uh ab about waiting for the tour guide and when we follow him instead of following him into the trees we could follow him into the dunes and when we wait we could still wait another 10 minutes and any invalid response is still a loss so this is great and then we can do another just else and then we can steal this invalid response code because this means when we asked if they would rather go to the jungle or the desert they didn't put in jungle or desert so really that means invalid response you lose so to look at that enter name we'll say han solo and welcome to our adventure we want to play the game let's go to the desert we're in the mighty sahara desert now let's follow and we follow him into the dunes. But if we do that again, and this time when it asks us where to go, um, enter your name, Alf, uh, let's play the game. Do you want to go to the jungle or desert? What if we want to go to space? Invalid response, you lose. So this is the core concept behind any text adventure game is just these infinitely nestable if loops. So if you're in the jungle, if you choose to follow him, then you could do a... Um, another response like uh, transport and you could make that an input saying you see a canoe nearby walk or take the canoe down the river and then you can make based off of that response you could say if transport is equal to walk and then do whatever here you want to um, based on if they say walk and then L if transport is equal to canoe and then whatever you want to do based on if they select canoe in here and then you can always put that else in saying invalid response down here so I'm not gonna do too many more layers of that um, I will copy in what I had. I had just a few more options in this when I was kind of demoing it in the beginning um, where you kind of, the one thing I put in there was the, the different ways you could die in this version. Um, I would print out what ending you had discovered. So someone who was enjoying the game and really want to explore the whole thing could, um, could technically play it out until they found all six potential endings. Um, so that's kind of a fun way to do it, but you can see it's it really is just take a question, get an input from the player back, and then based on how they responded to your question, 
that's how you want to proceed with the game. So it's totally the limits of this game and how fun it is are just the limits of your creativity. The basics of the programming, it's an amazing way for you to get familiar with Python strings, get familiar with Python in general, how the programming reads, the indentation rules, as well as a lot of the if, l, if, else statements. So I really like this as a beginner uh, project. It's, it's pretty fun and it's pretty easy. Um, if you have any questions about how to do your own or while you're programming it, you have any questions about what you saw in the video, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like on the channel, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton um, and check out all the other great content over there. If this was too easy for you, then we do have a lot of really in-depth Python and Pi game game tutorials where we really create full-fledged classic games like Pong, Space Invaders, um, things like that. So be sure to check the channel out for tons more like this. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.